Hi guys! So today I decided I wanted to make a quick haul video for you. I went to the flea market today and I went to the thrift store yesterday and um, got a few things. I haven't been here in a while because I started a new job so you haven't heard much from me lately. So I thought well you know this will be a quickie. Something easy we can I can you know chat for a bit and let you guys know how things are going and Anyways, this uh, I got this bag of vintage buttons at the flea market today, and it was six dollars for the whole bag. I thought that was a pretty good deal because it's full of, um, I think, pretty much vintage buttons, and they're still carded. So um, six dollars was an awesome deal considering you know how much you pay for buttons brand new in the store, or you know like six dollars or four ninety nine or five ninety nine for a single card. So this was an awesome bargain. Cute little oh wow. You can got more in the back side. Do you see that? Huh. I don't know what I'll do with those, but if you have an idea of what to do with these little round ones, let me know. They look like they might make interesting rings. Old Lamode buttons. <laughs> Lamode. I like this one's got the uh, Eiffel Tower on it. They're very heavy. These are very heavy. I have to wonder if they're not, you know, some sort of a lead that's been coated. But um, they could be pewter too. Anyways, they're definitely, they would. those alone would probably be worth the six bucks right there. They'd make, um, Interesting focal points. Little peach colored ones. Big old plain white ones. Look, they're fat. Got some little pearl buttons. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh, pretty. It's a buckle. Like a little mother of pearl buckle. Nice. Yeah, this was a score. I'm going to call this one a score. Six bucks for all of these. I'm sure you can find, you know, cheaper bargains, but sometimes vintage buttons can be hard to come by. You gotta really search for them. Um, you know, flea markets and estate sales and such. Sometimes you find a big old bucket of them at an estate sale and that's a real good score. Those I like. They're flat. They have suns on them. Interesting. More. Just even just the little plain pearl like ones would make because they're so flat and tiny would make you know nice embellishments for the scrapbooks and the ones with the big things on the back I'm not sure how you would use them but I'm sure there's plenty of crafts out there for buttons I think these are pretty cool they almost look like a thumbprint or something don't they anyways okay so that's the vintage button haul I got a I got a big old stack of maps, um, so they're just, um, there's a map of Canada, uh, a map of Quebec, Alabama, Georgia, uh, Florida, uh, looks like another Alabama, Georgia map, and this one is... No telling. Oh, it's got tape spots on it too. It's a well-loved map. It says St. John's on there. I don't know. I would have to, um, oh, Nova Scotia. Yeah, okay, I would have to probably take it apart to really find out. Um, and then a triple A, um, triptych. Wow. Oh, this is all about Maine. I thought it would be like a little road atlas for, you know, like a U.S. road atlas when I picked it up. I'm not familiar with these triptychs. I guess it's something that you could order custom, looks like, route for planning a road trip. Interesting. I'll bet that was something that AAA used to do or maybe even still does. Who knows? All right, cool. So that was neat. All right, so... Well, of course, I was at the flea market. Just like most flea markets, there was all these tempting, tempting handmade soaps. Um, 
Oh, I wish you guys could smell these. These smell so good. They're, um, and they have really cute little paper packages. So the paper could be reused, but the soaps are like heavenly smelling. My goodness. A nice, um, triple milled soap, shea butter, fresh milk. Oh my gosh. These would make your whole bathroom smell nice. They're so heavily scented. Lavender and chamomile. Mm. And um, yeah, I'll be back for more of those for sure. This one smells super good. Oh man. <laughs> you hear all my sniff noises. Uh, and this one is called Rose Water and Jasmine. Yeah, I might end up um, putting those in some packages. We'll see. Then I found this cool vintage kitschy, um, kids cookbook. <laughs> and the pictures are freaking great by Miriam B. Loose. L-O-O apostrophe S. Miriam B. Loose. Miriam. Um, let's see if there's a date in here. 1980. Yeah, it looks to be about that that period too, doesn't it? I think the early days of Martha Stewart, you know. Um, and back in those days, the pencil illustrations were kind of popular everywhere. You know, you looked. But I just think this picture right here was what sold me. Right there, they're sitting down, the kitties and the puppies are having tea. Or I guess it's kittens and mice and ducks and snails. Do you see the little snail? Um, <laughs> oh, and the frog and the bees. Just super cute. Um, even if I just copied it and used it. And there's like, there's recipes for special occasions. You have Easter, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Easter Bunny Salad, Father's Day. I think the Halloween is the cutest one by far. Here we go. Here's oh, here's Halloween. Look. <laughs> Recipe for witches. Boo. <laughs> Pumpkin bread. I don't know if he's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, what he's supposed to be. It was 1980. You never know. There, that could have been inspired by Ghostbusters. That's funny. Uh... Thanksgiving. Was Ghostbusters out in 1980? Might have been before then. It might have been after then. Who are you going to call? Liz needs to call Ghostbusters. <laughs> in her haunted thrift shop, right? Oh my gosh, look how cute. Oh, I love that. My mom made me a scarf that looked like that back in the 80s. I had a rainbow scarf. I swear to God. <laughs> so funny. What? It's like, you know, these little things that remind you of the past, too. You don't even have to see a picture. Sometimes it can just be something that reminds you of an era. So I would have been about 12 years old when this book was made. All right, so there's that. And then I found... This Now, I know that there's at least a couple people I know that are working on cat journals. And so I've kind of been keeping my eye out for cat ephemera and my eye out. And um, I saw this. I'm also planning on making a cat journal for a friend of mine soon who is, of course, very um, into cats. But look at the fabulous little inner sheet, the inner cover. I don't even know if there'd be a way for me to salvage the paper off that but um they're so cute i could probably copy that on the copier and um this i could probably actually get loose of the hout feline kitty book this is basically like um a mother's book for your cat <laughs> it's like to keep track of your cat's milestones <laughs> precious document chronicling the birth of the glorious one <laughs> I mean you know <laughs> people be into their cats now okay <laughs> the glorious day 
I'm hoping that my new kitty comes this weekend. The same friend I was going to make a cat book for was supposed to be giving me a kitten. Um, she's got a little gray tabby. Um, and he just looks so cute. I hope, I hope it works out this time. The last time it didn't work out, my... But the cat was older that we tried to integrate with our other cat and it just didn't work out. They were fighting, they were growling, they were they were violent with each other. It was not a good sitch. Favorite furniture, favorite adventure, favorite food. Just the pictures alone in this book are just really precious. So I can see, you know, just trying to... Um, pick out some of those pictures and then of course you have nice little pages like this that would be great for copying off so yeah this was two bucks I think that was worth it what do you think do you think this was worth two dollars I like the pictures in it all right so that was it for the flea market today now I get into what I found at the thrift store yesterday and we have a really good little thrift store in town that benefits, I'm sorry, you probably can't hear me. We have a good thrift store in town that benefits a local Christian school, and um, their prices are really good, and they have a ton of really cool, cool things in there. Like one of those thrift stores that, that you go in and it almost feels like a flea market. So I got a bunch of blank cards here, and then these are gift tags. And place cards, which I thought were pretty. And here's another one, another place card. It's got a little wine. I thought chicken soup for the soul, but you know they've they've got all these nice little kind of sentiments in there. So those might be nice to throw into a swap pack. Um, these are vintage postcards. There's a whole pack of them. A vintage postcards I got for a buck with the cute kitschy needle point on it um, more just tons and tons of cards I got postcards postcards this one is not vintage but it's it looks vintage it says tombstone on it so you know they're um I tried to pick the cute ones but like Copper Harbor is up in Michigan. That's in the UP. And so I thought I'd like that for my personal self. And then I have three of these Clearwater postcards that I can swap. And this is uh, New Orleans. You know, street performer in New Orleans. It's pretty noteworthy. The UP, which was where I went last summer on my road trip, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So I drove all the way up from Florida, did my two week road trip. This is so vintage. This is definitely, this looks almost 1960s to me, you guys, because, um, I mean, it's either 60s or 70s because daisies were really popular there towards the end of the 60s. So I thought it might be, it didn't have an envelope with it. There's a bunch of these um, with envelopes. So these I thought could um, go into swap packs. Fourth of July coming up. Of course, they're pretty, pretty birds. I like anything with birds on it. This one here looks like it was painted by a local person. This was probably local postcards that were sold. And it does remind me of my daughter playing on the beach. That's our beach, obviously, with the with the green water and the white sand. Um, so I thought it was cute. And it also reminds me of a painting that my sister painted of my oldest daughter playing on the beach when she was a little girl, which was just a fabulous painting. It was small, but it was really detailed. And um, when she was in fine art school. Here's another vintage. You can tell it's vintage. Look at that. You know. And then, of course, it's, it's you know, perfectly aged. <laughs> so I always like it. It's nice when you can find authentic vintage. This is something that's going to go in the pink journal I'm constructing for another friend right now. I have a friend who's fabulously into pink. So 
that was neat. And then I found this thing. This is like a little stationary kit, but look how it opens up. <gasps> and it's got notes in it and uh, envelopes and tuck spots already built in. So how fun is that? That that should definitely go into some a journal. Then I found, ooh, look, it's a vintage Steno book. Oh my god. Yeah, um, I'm not sure that, you know, they're kind of yellowed. The pages are kind of yellow. They're not, they're not necessarily a pleasing yellow. They're kind of more of a greenish yellow. But I remember when I first went to secretary school back in the um, 1980s, they made us learn shorthand. This here was the piece de resistance, I think, for this whole haul. I love Mary Engelbert, Bright, Bert. Mary Engelbright, but um, yeah, this one's just chock full of Mary Engelbright pictures. So <laughs> that's fab. That's totally fab. So cute. What a score. I mean, you know, they probably don't know that this stuff is collectible now. I don't know. I do like Mary Engelbright, her um, style is super cool. Then I found this, and this is a score. Um, when I started looking through here, I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. There's literally just pages and pages of beautiful color pictures of butterflies in this book. <laughs> that was an awesome find, you guys. I'm digging this big time. Look at that. Ooh, creepy crawlies. <laughs> the larval stage. Butterflies and moths. <clears throat> All manner of flying moths and insects. Anyways. Wow. Dude, look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. So... And then, once again, another cat book. Um, the Complete Guide to Cats. I do not know that I would rip into this book. I think it would be a nice reference just to have for the kitty cat lovers. And since I'm getting a new kitten and I already have another cat, maybe it's time for me to educate myself a little more in the care and keeping of cats. So, there's that. I found some vintage, I don't know if you would call this graph paper or photo paper or what. I think it's, uh, no, it's not sticky. That's weird. Anyways, I think it's cool. <laughs> so there's that. And almost done. Dried flower book, the best of dried flowers. I like pictures from these old crafty you know, mid-1980s craft books, I think, have lots of really great shabby chic photos in them and things that can be, you know, clipped out and used. And there are tons of these around. Um, just about any thrift store has got stacks and stacks of these old craft books in them from the 80s. And nobody wants them anymore. Nobody does this type of crafting anymore. You know, or at least it's really fallen by the wayside. There's just not a ton of people that deal with um, doing floral arrangements in some of these early 80s style crafts. But the pictures are still great, and we reuse them in a different way now, right? Oh my goodness, I've got an avalanche going on here. Okay. And then here was another example of that. Floral pots aplenty. Um, and in this one, I like the illustrations inside of it. Not necessarily the photographs, but even with the black and white illustrations, I thought were super cute and super usable. So there's that. And then I started thinking along the lines, and if you've been watching me forever, you know that I've even swapped pictures of... Um, cross stitches before 
And I think old cross stitch pattern books have interesting things in them. And I like the old cross stitch patterns. And then you usually get a color picture or two like these. So, um, you know, these can be really cute little things to fussy cut out. And then I also thought, you know, everybody's into um, coloring books these days. If you could find one where the pattern wasn't like broken up on the two pages like that, it might be fun to sit there with your marking pens and to color in the um, pattern, you know, according to the guides on top that says what color floss you would use. Maybe you could do it just with pen and just come up with something kind of unique that way. So there was that. Then I found a vintage country living magazine. I like vintage magazines too, and I have not even really flipped through this one yet, but right away, there you go. What a cute ad. Oh my gosh, look, there's ballerinas. <laughs> They're all dancing on the linoleum floor. And it's funny because the kitchen looks like my mom's kitchen. Like, you know, this one right here with the butcher block countertop, like our kitchen back in the 1980s when we lived up in the mountains. <laughs> and that would have been me tap dancing on the linoleum floor. I think we had that, that linoleum right there. I swear to God, it's funny. So funny. Wow, what a trip down memory lane. Um, oh, looky, cute, cute pictures. Country curtains. So many more pictures back in those days. Furniture restorer, country bookshelf. So that yeah, this is another thing I've just been keeping my eye out for. I think I paid 25 cents for this magazine. I'm sure it would be worth more if I put it up on eBay, but I'm not into that. I mean, they're out there. I'm obviously looking at it more for pictures that I might be able to um, then, you know, mine out of there. Wow. Look at, oh, look at those pictures. I love the, um, early American painting on the furniture. And it's funny to see how far, too, we've come in our style and how many things are actually still kind of in fashion. Like right now, you know, you could see that more in a modern flea market style type magazine. You know? Look at that. I love the ticking. Big old feather bed. Lots of ticking. That looks like a comfortable place to stay the night. I'd, I'd stay the night there. <laughs> oh my gosh. How cute. Yeah. So that one's fun. Uh, here's another Leisure Arts magazine. With some more cross stitch and some projects in there. What do you guys think about like taking pictures out of old craft magazines and stuff? Is it something you would do? Here's a package of note cards. It was like 50 cents. I think my my cost for this entire haul, both from the flea market and from yesterday ran me about 30 bucks so you know not not the cheapest haul I've ever done but certainly not out of the realm excuse me of possibility this was a Jacques Cousteau book and as you know I like to do um, mermaid paintings so I thought maybe this will give me some inspiration for my coral reefs um, saw that and said yeah for sure I'm picking that up <laughs> you know, mermaids have to have friends in the ocean, and so having some good visual references would be really cute, I think. Pretty stuff. I've always liked underwater photography, pictures of coral reefs. It's sad what's happening around the world to our coral reefs. It breaks my heart. Uh, I don't know if there'll ever be a solution, you know till kingdom comes I do believe that so I won't get real super religious on you because it's YouTube it's not you know, a lot of people will really put it out there you know I kind of I'll post a Jesus video every now and then on my Facebook page 
because I really pray that, you know, when someone watches a video that it might help to lead them to Christ or that it might at least lead them to watch other videos that they'll consider, you know, Christ and stuff. Because I am a Christian. I can't help but want to talk about Christ because he's my friend, you know. When you're a Christian, you develop like this, this relationship. You have friendship with Christ. It's the strangest thing because it's hard if you've never been through it to understand it that um, why Christians become so passionate it's because Christ is so good we want to share Christ we want to share the good news we're not trying to be necessarily trying to be judgmental but a lot of Christians come from a place of fear too and like you've got to accept Christ now or it's going to be too late and I won't really comment on that I'm not an evangelist but I do love Christ and I will talk about how much I love my my good friend Christ my my brother my father and he was with me last night. Sometimes I have some anxiety at night. It's hard to fall asleep, you know. And um, sometimes I'll put Christian television on in the room because it calms me. And I think part of that is what really kind of brought me back into the fullness of my relationship with Christ. But um, last night I had to really talk directly to him. And I just imagined he was sitting in the chair next to me. And I said, Father, I'm just having a hard time settle down. You know, I, I don't... I'm scared of having bad dreams and things like that and there's so much going on in the world and I have a hard time winding down at night and getting my mind to slow down and I said just be with me tonight just watch over me while I sleep and I swear to you I slept like a baby it was I was so grateful I woke up in the morning I said thank you for staying with me last night <laughs> God is good I mean it's hard to describe but God is good when you have a personal relationship with him you know it's real. You know that it's not just, you know, psycho woo-woo stuff. Because it's funny, you know, before I came back to Christ, I tried a bunch of different stuff. You know, I've meditated. I've, you know, you know, read books on Buddhism. I've read, you know, I even did a curtain with the Hare Krishnas. No, you know, no offense, more power to them. But, you know, it was nice. It was peaceful. But it didn't cause me to want to go out and shout it from the rooftops. Like, wow, you got to try Kirtan. It's the best thing ever. Come to come to Krishna. No, it was it's weird. But, you know, nothing else that I studied or ever thought about doing before ever made me want to scream it from the rooftops. Like, you got to come try this. This is awesome. You know, it's good because you see the changes and you feel the changes in your life. And um, Christ is what's done that for me. Now, I won't say that people haven't had revelatory experiences doing yoga and stuff like that. They can. And, you know, you can still be a Christian, I think, and and do yoga. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't practice Buddhism. I would do the physical side of it, but not necessarily practice Buddhism while you're doing your yoga. But anyways, I didn't mean to get all theological on you. You can... <laughs> For those of you that love Jesus, you understand. And for those of you that don't, I wish you could understand. Let's just leave it at that. So I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful weekend and um, a beautiful rest of your week. And tell me what you think about the haul. All right? God bless everyone. Bye.